You don't have to be in the gem business like me to know that these little buggers can be expensive. And if you're a person who enjoys adorning yourself or the ones you love with beautiful glittery stones, you either have to make a lot of coin or you have to know how to make your own at home. I know that sounds like a joke, but it isn't. I never joke with you guys. I'm 100% serious all the time. Get it? That's a joke. But in all seriousness, there are some tricks that allow you to grow some pretty convincing crystals all on your own. Now, before I continue, I have to say you probably won't end up with a gem that looks exactly like it's been growing in the earth for thousands of years, cut by a skilled lapidary and set in a beautiful brooch, necklace, or ring. For that, you'll have to visit your local jeweler or JTV's online store. And one more thing, some of these processes I'll be discussing involve copious amounts of heat and some potentially reactive chemicals. So we're not recommending you try these without the help of an experienced adult. And yes, I'm fully aware of the irony of the don't try this at home warning on a gems you can make at home video. Maybe we should call it gems you can technically make at home. But let's say you're a nerd like me and enjoy chemistry and gemstones and want to grow a fake ruby crystal. All you need is some hot water and some potassium alum. No, no, not someone who graduated from Potassium University. That would be a potassium alum. Get it. As we know, rubies and sapphires alike are corundum. Since this process involves mixing this potassium alum with water, this will not produce an actual corundum crystal. But if you leave the solution overnight, small crystals will begin to form. Add a little red food coloring to make your crystals red like a ruby. If not, the crystals will be completely colorless. They're about a two on the Mohs scale. Real rubies and sapphires are a nine and they're readily soluble in water. Let's see if we can grow something just as pretty, but a little bit more useful. Bismuth crystals may be more practical option. These crystals have a fascinating geometric shape and a beautiful play of color due to an oxide layer that forms over the crystal soon after it's been formed and exposed to open air. All you have to do to make this amazing specimen is get some bismuth metal, either through non-lead sinkers that use bismuth or just order some online. Put it in a ceramic bowl that you plan on never eating out of again and get it really hot using a stovetop or a hot plate. Bismuth has a relatively low melting point, around 520 degrees Fahrenheit. Liquefying the bismuth allows it to separate from its impurities, ultimately allowing pure bismuth crystals to form. After the bismuth crystals start to form, pour away the remaining liquid bismuth before it starts to harden around the crystals. At first, the bismuth won't have those amazing colors we know and love, but after a few minutes, an oxide layer will form over the crystal, creating the beautiful rainbow coloring. We just ended up with a pretty breathtaking specimen that we made in the kitchen and only destroyed like what, two bowls? But that's none of my bismuth. And as long as no one finds out that you messed up some of their dishes, I'd say this was a success. But bismuth is more of a sit it on a shelf and look at it kind of stone. I want something I can wear. Something a little less flashy, but still beautiful, maybe more attainable. How about a classic quartz crystal? Now, this is a little intense, but it can be done. All you need is a pressure cooker and some silicic acid. And of course, use extreme caution when dealing with boiling pressurized acids. You're probably thinking, Natalie, I'm not the joker. Where am I gonna get some silicic acid? This is where this one gets just a tad bit tricky. You can try and order some online or make it yourself by acidifying sodium silicate in a water-based solution. If you manage to jump that hurdle, all you need now is a pressure cooker. By pressurizing the silicic acid, it rearranges the molecular makeup into a crystalline form. But beware, the silicic acid has a tendency to misbehave and come out as a silica gel. If that happens, then feel free to store them in a pouch that reads, do not eat. This process is pretty close to the system used by German geologist Carl Emil von Schaffittel, who was the first person to grow a quartz crystal in a lab using hydrothermal synthesis, which is a similar process used to grow lab-grown quartz crystals found in electronic devices. Do you like doing chemistry at home? Do you wish you could perform some of these experiments on your own, but you totally won't because we told you not to because you might hurt yourself or others? Let us know in the comment section. And for more information on homebrew gemstones, and the science behind it, check out the links below. Thanks for watching, everyone.